All right. So this is coming back from a six week rental. Look at that wheel all curved up. It was black, new tires on it. Curved up. And this damage right here and this damage right here that's what's going on what's going on boys and girls we're about to drop the first episode of the kill switch chronicles it's not the one you're thinking about, but it's one that occurred today that I think you guys will find really interesting. All right, this is the beginning of week 11 and something that's really interesting. Last night I had two cars come back in the middle of the night. Now one guy, he was only a few hours late but I will tell you why he brought it back in the middle of the night. And I had another guy, he just brought the car back, didn't even let me know he was bringing it back, and he was three days late. And he locked the car door with the key in the car. Fortunately, I had a second set of keys. And this has been a common theme. When they get behind, there's always something wrong with the car always so I had to take a Camry that this dude let, let me tell you what happened with the Camry this dude hit some so hard he literally shifted the whole suspension carriage they had to put it on the alignment rack drive it come back put it on the alignment rack drive it and put it on the alignment rack three times to straighten it out because whatever he ran over that he punctured this tire shifted the whole rack now that's not a bad story in the beginning you saw what he did to the car in six weeks and i'm going to look at that um front bumper because i'm having an issue with bumpers and camrys uh now this car i paid eighty four hundred dollars for payment and taxes and it's made almost four thousand it's made four thousand minus the $600 to get it repaired today. So I'm in a position where I may just trade that car and get from under it because if that bumper comes off, it's $1,800. It's $1,800. And I'm just sitting there like, you know, we're ahead. We could trade out of it and we could just move on because uh, I've learned some stuff. The second car, which was an Acura when I got in it. Oh yeah, all cars come back bone empty. Bone empty. Always on E. I'm talking fumes, man, fumes. So I get in the second car and it's all the way to the E. I'm like, okay. And I start driving it and the steering wheel starts doing this. So he's run over something, but the car wasn't damaged and the car needed a service. If you're gonna do hire a car and you buy a used car, you might as well take it to your mechanic and have them do an oil change, whatever services, because these folks are gonna drive and whatever maintenance interval is gonna pop up, it's gonna pop up pretty quick. So let's get to the headliner of the day. I had this older woman, because when I first saw her, because essentially when they requested, you could see a picture of them, and I'm just like, why is grandma requesting a BMW 330i? And I'm like, this is kind of curious, right? So grandma comes and I'm communicating with who I think is grandma, but it's not grandma. It's actually her daughter. And I run in the car, I look at the license, the, everything checks out. Uh, it was a week long rental and I started getting these strange messages. 
like uh, this radio work yeah the radio works and does the sunroof work oh yeah the one before this one actually who's a late runner broke the sunroof and the sunroof is three thousand dollars because they have to replace the whole sunroof so you know what i did i was like take the fuse out and they took the fuse out and you cannot open it because essentially it will open but it gets stuck and it, it's very it's, it's just like it'll open and it'll stay in that position so i just like take the fuse out and this car just won't have a sunroof while i'm renting it until i can find a cheaper option because i'm just sitting there like I only pay like eight thousand dollars for the car three thousand dollar repair on something that's not mechanical i i don't know about that i don't know about that so i'm just sitting here like grandma trying to get her tunes on grandma is trying to get her breeze on with the sunroof and this is one of the reasons that i'm not going to um i'm I may buy an older bmw tomorrow but i'm getting away from that because the older they are the more that you have these little issues and i'm getting away from it so as many of you can surmise grandma and grandma rented that car for her daughter and this car has the gps kill switch on it which is one of the reasons that i did it because if i didn't have the kill switch i would have canceled the rental but um and grandma has been at north druid hills she you know it's just like she's been living her best life and like i said i met this woman who is like 76 i believe from her license 76 years old and i was just sitting there like she got in the car and she drove off and part of it is i live in sandy springs and you see it all of the time around here. You'll see someone clearly 70, 80, 90 years old in a drop top Benz or drop top Porsche tooling around, living their best life. You see it all the time. So I was kind of perplexed, but you know, at the end of the day, I feel that it is her daughter that is driving that car. So why did I do this? knowing that my spotty senses are tingling they paid for a week-long rental and typically i have had no issues except with one for folks who pay a week at a time or three or four days at a time i don't have issues with those folks so long as they don't wreck it long as they take care of it i really don't care because uh as you saw the damage with the the camry and stuff um i was like you know it 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 doesn't distract it doesn't impact like that that front bumper that could be a problem that could be a problem that sucker come off that's eighteen hundred dollars and let's talk about the higher car claims process first of all you have to submit it through the app then they're going to ask you to submit some more information through a website called Vista. And then they're gonna ask you for the same information again. Cause like I told her, you know, cause essentially the claims process isn't set up for business people. Cause I had the car fixed and I rented it out again. And essentially what they're kind of expecting is for me just to have this car with the bumper hanging off of it, just sitting here waiting till they get back to me. And that's not how I roll. So I got to submit more paperwork. I got to submit some more stuff. I got to submit proof that I paid them. And um, yeah, it, it, it's just crazy because claims. Now it usually takes three to four weeks for a gas claim because essentially all of these cars come back empty except for the white chick. Becky with the good hair, she brought the car back clean, undamaged, with a full tank of gas. So I was like really, really grateful for that. But typically the day I had two cars come back and one is in the shop, like, like I said, I had routine maintenance. And like also with the Camry, dude rode the, I mean, that whatever he hit, he hit that a while ago. 
And th this is something else too. When they're driving your cars and it's not their cars, they will drive the shit out of your car because it ain't their car. Because I looked at the wheel and I saw on the inside, there was belts. He had rolled it down to the belt and the other tire was worn, but this side was where the alignment really, really came out. And I, I'm fully expecting some alignment issues with the Acura that I had to take over here. But once again, this is a new one. I knew that people let other folks drive cars, but this, I, I, I'm like, bless her little heart, bless her little heart, trying to help her daughter out. And we will see how this goes because they got the GPS kill switch on it. It get a little funky, switch it off. I have an extra, I have a spare key. I don't have a spare key for that one. When I was trying to get a spare key for that one, the BMW uh, system was down and he couldn't make a key. So we will see. But once again, I am not going to be confrontational. If they don't pay, I'm just going to turn the car off and go, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, that's so terrible. Do this, leave the key in the car. I will have a tow truck come get it. And then once they go away, I'll just turn it back on and zoom, 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 zoom. But I mean, I see there's going to be some funny stuff, even with the normal rentals, because when I rent a car to someone, I always say it's on the full tank of gas. Please bring it back that way, because essentially the gas station isn't that far. But it's annoying because you got to go get gas, you got to put your card in, then you have to submit your claim, then you have to wait three to four weeks for a hire car to give you your money back. And I will tell you, if you're getting in this business and you have a fleet, like I got a fleet of 21 cars, and you're going to need some operating capital. You're going to need some operating capital. You're going to need operating capital for gas tags, inspections, GPS kill switches, all of this stuff, because I got a $25,000 limit on that credit card. And today I spent 2,600 just today. Uh, the BMW check engine light was on. That was 900 bucks. Uh, the Camry which I'm gonna keep. I was gonna get rid of it, but I'm gonna keep because the guy did the full service and this Camry should be good to go for about a year or two. So I'm gonna keep that. And then for the tires, it was 618. So I spent $2,600, $2,700 today. Today. And essentially what I feel is gonna happen because uh, this month, I would have been at 8,000 if it wasn't for the yard birds. And I got another yard bird I got to deal with tomorrow because, you know, he, he, he was paying good. And all of a sudden, it's amazing how they slip into yard bird territory and he ain't communicating. So what's going to happen tomorrow is I'm going to send a demand letter. And once I, uh, I've learned how to finesse the police, I'll send that demand letter and then I'll have my little receipt that I sent to the demand letter and I send the demand letter priority so he'll get it i'll send it tomorrow what is tomorrow tomorrow's thursday so he'll get it friday and then the police report will go out and they will put a stolen car bulletin out friday because i've learned how to do that and then we'll just do that and then monday gps kill switch on that bad boy because essentially what i've learned and if you're going to do higher car you're going to need a gps kill switch 100 percent and this is something that I did not know about before I got into the business because I was looking at all of this positive stuff here on YouTube where people weren't really telling you the down and dirty details about renting cars. Uh, car b, b was the only one that was really laying it out. He has a video titled three accidents and one stolen car in one week. And y'all think I'm the only one going through this. Uh, James Anderson, he's had two of his four cars totaled. And I feel that because these people are in the rental, they just don't care. Because I got an Acura that 
Oh, and this is something else too. I had a girl who wanted to rent the 550. Let me tell you what's going on with the 550. The 550 has a lot of issues and I'm not getting it fixed because I'm going to trade it in. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to pick that bad boy up tomorrow and go trade it tomorrow because I got the title and just trade my way out of that because essentially um, I need to listen to that little voice, that little voice because uh, I, I felt bad after I bought that car and I kind of regretted buying it and now I really regret buying it. So this month july and august i'm cleaning up all the messes uh, i'm gonna check that bumper kind of pull on it a little bit and if it's like really messed up i'm gonna trade out of it because this is one of the things what happens is these repairs like normal maintenance it'll be 500 to maybe a thousand that's not that bad because i'm almost um i don't even know what my daily rental rate is i think that once I get everything rented, I'll be doing like a thousand or maybe 1200 bucks per day. So if I have a thousand dollar bill, like it'll just take a day to reclaim that money. And this is one of the reasons that the yard birds really, really hurt me because I lost about three grand dealing with these clowns and I got another one. And once again, this is the, the month where I'm going to um, clean up, get the GPS kill switches in and reset my fleet because I'm getting rid of all of the crappy cars because uh, the guy who rented the Camry that came back from service, he was like kind of shocked. He's like, this is in really good condition because essentially there's a lot of junk on hire car. And apparently I am one of the few owners who actually takes care of my cars. If something's wrong with it, I will get it fixed. And essentially, I've just committed myself to getting this stuff fixed because August should be like a better month than this month because um, we still got half the month to go. And I've already done 6,000, should have been eight, 9,000. And one of the things I've learned is like the Camry came back, the old Acura come back. People are not trying to hang on to these cars but the BMWs, the Range Rovers, the Porsche, I have hella problems getting those back because they don't want to let go. And I think some of you have made some astute observations that they're telling people that these are their, their, their cars. I would not tell someone that a rental car is my car, but that's me. And I, I feel that a lot of that stuff is going on because it is like, essentially like they get late with a Camry or one of the Acras, it's just bring it back and it comes back in the middle of the night because once again, this is one of the reasons that I'm not going to be confrontational because they always bring it in a back in the middle of the night because they don't want to face me. They don't want to look me in the eyes and like, hey man, I'm sorry I ain't pay you. They, they, they just like bring it back in the middle of the night, park it in the parking lot. And I woke up this morning and I found two cars and then I went to the processor because I knew they were bone empty. I always, I know, I just know that I mean, I, the lack of consideration, because this one guy, he was like, hey, could you let him know it's back so I can get this other car? Which tells me he has money. He has money, but here's something else. And this is how a hire car works. Whenever I put in one of these gas claims, their account gets locked down. And they have to pay that gas claim so a hire car will be re, uh, renumerate it for that money and if they don't pay that gas claim power car will pay me for that gas claim and they will not be able to rent another car so on my account i have probably got eight people locked out their account because they bring the cars back with no gas and i'm just sitting there like okay and like you know i got a friend who owns a dealership and he has a buy here pay here and he's like I just repossess them. They don't care. I don't care. They don't pay me. I just go get the car, sell it to someone else. And that's kind of where I'm getting to because, you know, uh, I, I did have a girl who wanted one of the BMWs and I said, reserve it. And once again, I had someone who wanted the car and he didn't reserve it. And then he changed his mind. He probably got a car from someone else. 
So I didn't tell her, but if she didn't reserve it, if someone like wanted it, it was going to be gone. But she did reserve it. And I have a feeling she's going to be a good paying client because she communicates. So I will see her tomorrow. We will switch out and she's got the Range Rover and she will bring the Range Rover back. So uh, I did not check today to see if I have any more titles, but I got the title to the 550. I got the title to the Camry and I should be getting a bunch of titles because I got 13, had 14 before I sold the Porsche. So I need eight more titles to be coming in and I feel that will happen. But yeah, this is what's going on because essentially uh, I'm gonna set up the Kill Switch Chronicles very nicely. I need to be in the proper mental before I drop off the first Kill Switch because essentially um, what I'm learning is the public is ruthless. Public don't give a damn. The public is ruthless. And one of the things I have to do is put my mind together because like I said, if um, I didn't have these Yardbirds, and once again, these Yardbirds, I'm beginning to understand the mentality. I'm beginning because I'm starting, like, once again, I'm like, if I have problems out of this, I already know that it was coming because I know that grandma did not rent a BMW 330 for herself. She rented it for the daughter who, for some reason, can't rent a car on hire car. Either she doesn't have a license, either she doesn't pass the background check, there's some reason that she doesn't. And also, it got funny, it's like, oh, I think she really likes this. You gonna sell it? And I'm like, I just bought that car. <laughs> I'm not trying to sell it, because I have everybody, I've had one, two, three, four people who wanted to buy the car, and they ended up being late, which would tell me because essentially I've been telling folks like, you know, if you build a good relationship with me, when I open up to buy here, pay here, that will be your credit. And a lot of folks have already flunked that test. They flunked that test big time. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to, because the car I'm getting tomorrow is instantly going over for the GPS kill switch. The car is not going to be rented without a GPS kill switch. And we will see. I might get two cars tomorrow because I'm waking up first thing and I got to set up my game plan because um, I can trade the Camry in and lose no money. And that may be one of the ones to go because I got to see how that bumper is looking in the morning because my goal is to go to this dealership. I already know where the car is. It will work really well. And it's a car that I can rent out for 50 bucks a day. And um, go out and get that bad boy bring it back and then if the bmw because essentially it's in the shop if that bmw is uh, ready take that bmw somewhere trade out of it i'm not fixing it uh, because once again this is the car that tiffany broke and some of the stuff i don't think that she i, I have no clue maybe she just had bad juju i don't know but essentially trade out of that and then when I get the title to the Mini, it's gone. Um, I'm trading out of that because one of the big issues is cars that are really hard to work on are really expensive to work on. And the Mini broke down and they did all this stuff and it didn't work, which means, and someone actually tuned the Mini. And if you don't know what tuning is, tuning is you can put in a chip or software that reprograms the engine to make it run faster giving it more horsepower, making it quicker. Because uh, it's a zippy little car when it's working, but I already see the path of what's gonna happen. So that's why I'm getting rid of that as soon as I get the title. And um, what I'm finding out is these 2007 to 2013 BMWs are pretty well built. Um, when they break, they can be expensive, but for the most part, uh, I'm seeing a lot of people ride the shit out of them because they can. So um, I may have two more BMWs tomorrow. Who knows? Who knows? But yeah, this is your first episode of the Kill Switch Chronicles. Uh, I will probably, what is today? Wednesday. I will probably drop the first Quilt Kill Switch story Sunday. It just depends on how I feel and all the stuff I got to do because 
Uh, tomorrow's a big is a busy, busy day. But yeah, grandma is tooling around Georgia in a BMW. It's you know, if I didn't live in this neighborhood, because when I first saw it, I was like, this is odd. This is real odd. But once again, once I saw her daughter and everything, and I was just sitting there like, uh-huh, uh-huh. But I have a confidence of that GPS kill switch. So if I don't get paid, I can just go ahead and, uh, oh my goodness, it don't work. Leave the key in the car. I will have it towed and just go get my car and roll out like that. Also, I've had someone who actually didn't live here who rented a car because he was like, my plane is coming in. And I was like, bro, we closing at six. So, you know, I'll, I guess he'll pick up that car tomorrow because I asked him, I was like, do you live here? Because essentially, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if he's moving here or he was just out of town. He came back in. We will find out tomorrow. But yeah, we got a lot more stuff coming. And I have a feeling, I just have a feeling since I'm in the ATL that these are going to be some hilarious stories. I just have a feeling. So that's all I got for you guys. I will see you in the next one.